Go watch part one if you haven't already. ODEs or PDEs. An ordinary differential equation is an equation that involves a function of a single independent variable like y equals f of x and its derivatives dy by dx, d squared y by dx squared and so on. The order of an ordinary differential equation depends on what the deepest level of the derivative is. So this is an example of a first order differential equation and the second order is something like this and so on. A partial differential equation is the same thing but with multiple independent variables and partial derivatives. So for example, the one-dimensional heat equation or the one-dimensional wave equation. Fields Medal. The Fields Medal is the Nobel Prize of mathematics. If you get one of these, it means that you're under the age of 40 and you've already made significant contributions to mathematics. The Newton-Leibniz feud. One day in 1684, Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz from Germany published a paper on differentiation and cemented his name in history as the founder of calculus. Except that a few years earlier in England, Isaac Newton was already using calculus as a tool for physics, which he called Fluxions. So English mathematicians naturally started accusing Leibniz of plagiarism. As an English person, I fully support Isaac Newton, and I think it would be a lot better if the Germans just focused on something that they were good at, like losing world wars. Cardinality is a way to measure the size of a set. For example, if a set A contains elements 2, 4, and 6, then the cardinality of that set is 3. Simple, right? Well, no, because you can also have cardinalities of infinite sets, which is how we prove that there are more real numbers than there are integers, because the cardinality of the set of real numbers is greater than the cardinality of the set of integers. Two sets A and B have the same cardinality if there exists a bijective function, meaning the function is both one-to-one -one and the range of outputs is equal to the image of the function. Naive set theory. This is the version of set theory that makes sense. A set is just a collection of elements, like how a bag is just used to hold a bunch of objects. But this version leads to contradictions like Russell's paradox. Take for example the set of all sets which don't contain themselves. Does this set contain itself? If it doesn't, then it's part of the set of all sets which don't contain themselves, so it should contain itself, but it contains itself, then it's not a set which doesn't contain itself. So to fix this, mathematicians developed axiomatic set theory. Vector fields. A vector field is a function which assigns a vector to every point in space. This is useful in physics when you're dealing with fluids because you can define the velocity of a fluid as a 3D vector field. Fundamental theorem of calculus. If you tell a normal person that you study calculus, they might think you're doing this. When really, the fundamental theorem of calculus is just when f of x is continuous from a to b, and we define a function capital F of x equals the integral from a to x of f of t dt, then capital F prime of x equals f of x. In other words, differentiating an integral undoes the integration. Bernoulli family. The Bully Bully Boo family are a Swiss family known for their work in calculus, probability, mechanics, and number theory. Jacob Bernoulli introduced the Bernoulli numbers. Johann Bernoulli contributed to calculus of variations and exponentials and logarithmic functions. And Daniel was famous for fluid mechanics, eigenvalues, and eigenvectors. Given a square matrix A, an eigenvector V is the non-zero vector such that when multiplied by A, it does not change the direction, it only gets scaled. So A of V equals lambda V. Riemann and Darboux integrals. The Riemann integral formalizes the area under a curve for a function f of x on the interval from A to B. First, define f as the set of sub-intervals between A and B. Second, pick a sample point x sub i in each sub-interval from x sub i minus 1 to x sub i. Third, form the Riemann sum s of f and p as this. And finally, take the limit as the norm of the partition where the norm of p is the max change in x sub i, which tends to zero. The Darboux integral is a slightly different formalization which uses suprema and infima instead of arbitrary sample points. For each sub-interval from x sub i minus 1 to x sub i, define m sub i as the infimum of f of x where x is an element of this subinterval, i.e. the smallest value of f of x. And capital M sub i is the supremum of f of x where x is an element of the subinterval. Then the lower and upper sums are like so. Take the supremum of all lower sums and the infimum of all upper sums, and if the lower and upper integrals coincide, then f is Darboo integrable, and the common value is the integral. Wave slash heat equations. The heat equation models how heat diffuses through a medium over time, and the wave equation models vibrations or waves like on a string, membrane, or in air. Fourier slash Laplace transform. The Fourier transform decomposes a function into its frequency components. 
Think of it as expressing a function as a sum of sine and cosine waves of different frequencies. And it's useful for analyzing signals, vibrations, heat, and waves. The Laplace transform is like the Fourier transform, but with an extra exponential damping factor that makes it converge for a much larger class of functions. Haley Hamilton theorem. For an n by n matrix A, its characteristic polynomial is the determinant of the eigenvalues times the identity matrix minus A. And if you take that polynomial, replace lambda with the matrix A, you get the zero matrix. Newton Raphson method. If we have a function f of x and we want to find x when f of x equals zero, then we start with a guess x sub zero and we use this tangent line approximation to get closer and closer to the real value. Taylor series. The Taylor series lets us approximate a whole function by a polynomial built from its derivatives at a single point. If f of x is infinitely differentiable at a point a, then the Taylor series of f centered at a is this. L'Hospital's rule. Sometimes a limit will give you an impossible result like 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. But L'Hospital says that if f and g are differentiable near a, and as x tends towards a, both f and g tend towards 0 or plus or minus infinity, and g prime of x is not equal to 0 near a, then the limit as x tends to a of f of x over g of x is equal to the limit of f prime of x over g prime of x. Fun fact, this wasn't actually discovered by L'Hospital. In fact, L'Hospital was wealthy and essentially paid Johann Bernoulli to tutor him and share discoveries. In fact, there is a surviving contract in which Bernoulli agreed to supply him with new mathematical results for money. Jordan normal form. A matrix A is in Jordan normal form if it's a block diagonal with each block being a Jordan block. A Jordan block for eigenvalue lambda of size k looks like this. So Jordan form looks like this. Isomorphism theorems. The isomorphism theorems appear in groups, rings, vector spaces, and other algebraic structures, and they all describe how quotient structures and substructures interact. I can't be bothered to explain all of these to you because again, it would take too long, but pause the video if you want to see. Stokes theorem. Stokes' theorem generalizes several theorems like the fundamental theorem of calculus and Green's theorem into one unifying statement. Let S be an oriented smooth surface in the reals cubed with boundary curve partial S oriented consistently. If F is a smooth vector field, then surface integral of the curl of F over the surface S equals the line integral of F around the boundary curve del S. Or in other words, the circulation density across the surface is equal to the total circulation around the edge. Determinant. Another cool thing you can do with matrices is determinants. If you have a two by two matrix, then the determinant of this is just the product of the leading diagonal minus the other diagonal. If it's a three by three matrix, then you use this formula and a four by four then you use this and so on. Something really cool is that if you have a three by three matrix, instead of using this formula, you can find the determinant by copying these four numbers over to the right and multiplying A by the determinant of these four, B by the determinant of these four, and C by the determinant of these four and adding them together. Kernel and image. Suppose we have a linear map or function between vector spaces T where V and W are vector spaces. The kernel of T is the set of all vectors in V that map to the zero vector in W. Think of it as the vector that disappear under T. In terms of matrices, if T of V equals A of V, then the kernel of T is all V such that A of V equals zero. The image of T is the set of all vectors in W that are outputs of T. Think of it as the vectors that you can reach by applying T. In matrix terms, the image of T is the column space of A. Click and watch this video if you want to see more, like if you want to see the rest of the iceberg, and piss off. <laughs>